the world is on the biggest change. Well, the world is in the biggest change in history. We are seeing massive, massive, massive moves from the US dollar and how that has been used to control many countries across the world. And it's been and it really has been abused. You're having countries in Africa now waking up to the fact that they don't have to use the system that has been put in place on them to extort them. When we wake up to that fact, when ninety ninety percent of the world wake up to that fact, a lot of them, and unfortunately, like every change that happens in history, there'll only be one percent that make it through. Question, question, question. Are you part of that one percent? Or will you be part of the ninety nine? Sheep that are left to follow a system that will continue, that will continue to keep you in the dark as opposed to bringing you into the light. That said, nothing is impossible today. Nothing. Even the 99% can still get up there. They are waking up. As a result, we are seeing the, the massive protests. We're seeing um, a lot of change happening, starting with trade finance. And this is where I will start this video because um, start the, the, where I'm going with this, with, with what I'm trying to say, there are, there are so many um, things to talk about. Um, and ho I hope this video helps you guys to understand where we're going, where we are now and the future the possible future for a lot of what is changing for you today, for me, and you tomorrow. Bank goes bust, you would want to know what happens next and who foots the bill. Back in 14th century Barcelona, if a bank failed, the owners of the bank would be publicly condemned by the town crier and forced to live on bread and water until they repaid people they owed money to. Fast forward to the global financial crisis that ignited in 2007, when a number of UK banks and building societies got into trouble. In the end, the government had to step in, using taxpayers' money to bail out failing banks. Things have changed since then. The Bank of England has a new set of tools that allow it to step in quickly where needed. If your bank ran into difficulties and went bust today, you can be safe in the knowledge that you would still have access to your money up to £75,000 and be able to make payments. A bank failure today would play out in an orderly way with far less disruption to the rest of the financial system than before. And crucially, under the new setup, the costs would fall on the shareholders and creditors of the failed bank, not on taxpayers. Well, you know that's a lie, OK? You know that's a damn lie. Right, because taxpayers still bail out banks. Okay, Digitech Lifestyle back with another video. This one's a long one. Okay, be prepared. Right, so let's continue. Right, back in November 2018, the 13th of November to be precise, um, there was a document um, that says that. 3018 but this came out um 2018 anyway um it goes on to transforming global payments and uh, when i click the link here it takes me to this this page here okay so let's go through this and reason why i'm going through this with you guys because i'm hoping it's not just ripple that is going to be the um detect not I'm hoping I'm going to say this in, in this sense it's not just Ripple that is not going to be the only technology that is used in the the payment infrastructure uh, and that is transforming 
um, the global payments or um, infrastructure. There are so many more technologies out there that are going to be used, not just for payments, but in other um, ways, um, like Kadira, like um, XDC uh, for uh, um, um, uh, cross-border payments, but for um, more trade finance payments um that's where xdc is going to be more specializing in and i also understand that they are um venturing into to games and all that kind of stuff so there's massive uh, um opportunities to be had with certain tokens it, as long as they're ut utilized and they have utility this is where i'm bringing you back to where ripple is one of those utility tokens it has utility they're talking about bringing it into the system to make it something that is of value and the internet of value this is what the ripple's vision is enable the world to move money like information moves today over overview of ripple solutions ripple offers two software solutions that's what they did then but they offer more now um this is back in 2018 okay i'm taking you back to 2018 okay x current live today which is live x rapid um live today um which is uh connecting connect x current connectivity solutions coordinate transactions across ledgers by directional and real-time settlement x rapid um, which is live today liquidity solutions leverage a digital asset for reach to new corridors establish reach without pre-funding overseas so what the problem is with the banking system at the moment is it has to have um, a lot of uh, money um, in other jurisdictions, say the dollar, whatever it is they transact in, in other um, jurisdictions in order to facilitate. And then the money has to be counted and all that kind of stuff. And it is cumbersome, it is slow, and it takes days sometimes to settle. And a lot of that money can go missing in certain aspects of it. It's not always guaranteed to reach its destination. I've heard it said that it's quicker to take money across by plane um, to another jurisdiction. However, that is deemed as um, could be, um, uh, you know, anti-money laundering or fraudulent or terrorists, terrorism and all that kind of stuff. Funding terrorism, if you if you get what I'm saying. This is what I was just saying. The document um, just goes on to say. The legacy, and this is the old system, um, sequence process creates problems. Original or, or, originating banking or bank, uh, sending correspondent, receiving correspondent, and beneficiary bank. And one way messaging unlinked from settlement instructions. So Ripple actually allows for that to happen where it, you have more settlement, instant messaging, instant settlement kind of thing. Well, I think it takes about seven seconds um, for, for a transaction to complete. Um, the, the system, the old legacy system has delays. Um, relay process can cause two to four days um, unpredictable. Uh, it has risks, uh, no payment tracking status information available. You know, this is what um, uh, is the problem. And this is what causes uncertainty, fees, total cost unknown to sender. Uh, and that's just for cross-border payments uh, in, in some respects. Um, with Ripple, um, coordinated process enables new benefits. Or, or originating bank and beneficiary uh, bank by directional messaging, messaging with settlements instructions speed process settles real time instead of two to four days transparency end-to-end -end tracking and status of payment certainty total cost and message details confirmed before initi initiation lower cost reduce failed um, payments and costly intervention for error resolution that is solving the problem we have today in payments and Oh, it is it is wonderful to see that this technology is here and it has it has been I think it's been here for quite some time. But they need a problem and then reaction, then a solution. And we're gonna have a problem at some stage 
throughout this. We've had problems since 2019. The system failed back then. Um, it, 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 in September 2019, before the the one nine thing came out, and they actually made it official, the system had actually cracked. Um, so the key functions of what Ripple was going to do is, um, and, and they are based on the ISO 22, 222 format, and I've actually got a video on that. Um, bi bidirectional messaging and tracking. Um, ISO 222 format and expandable contextual field, real-time settlement instruction, and capturing, uh, are capable, sorry, of running 24-7-365. So you're talking about um, continuous money flows 24 7 three, six, five, instead of two to four days of settlement and uh, encryption from blockchain technology right and the benefit the ripple has a uh, advisory board on and their rule book and governance advisory board um, consists of members and the uh, chartered standard bank i believe that is or west bank and uh, no, the charts chartered standard west pack standard there bank of america and o m no m u f g i have no idea who they are to be fair and that's honest um the case study is for ripple japan thailand remitted service santander one, one pay um, and you guys can go and look this up yourselves, seriously. You guys can go and do your own research on when it comes down to this. It's snapshot of customers. Um, I've just mentioned a few of them up there. Um, SCB, Excess Bank, um, AK, uh, yes. And and I've also did a video yesterday. They have other three over 300 other banks in America. No, 30, sorry. Banks in America. Uh, 30 um, licenses, sorry. L licenses, yes licenses in america the and i mentioned uh yesterday's video they have x rapid which is live and um, reducing payment frictions um mckenzie corp um uh, the past research pre-funded relationships the the expansion and fund expanding reach using digital assets um, and they give a graph here of what it is the eu usd mex myi myr CNX, CNY, I have no idea, uh, I know what that means, but sure, I'm sure it means uh, uh, um, currencies and use, uh, use case bridging fiats to solve liquidity problems. And you have a graph here um, between what they intend to do, US coordinating um, or, 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 or originating, originating, sorry, and X Rapid um, is is then used as the solution, and say Mexico is a country that has to have the the currency. It's in their sent to their financial institution, and then yes, okay. Um, you have then exchanges USD. It goes through this loophole to get to that stage, I guess. Or well, oh, actually, yeah, Ripple's X, yeah. Hence you have X Rapid, makes sense. Okay, anyway, and some of the um, exchanges they mention as well, Bitrex, Bitsu, um, US, US Sender, and how the system actually works, Ripple Infrastructure, and I'm bringing you this video, and this is going to be a long one, I think, today, quite simply because I don't think people understand that just because a token is at 50 cents, don't mean it, it ain't going to do something. Yeah, there are so many use cases for this particular token. And I, I don't think, or many understand, there's going to be a 1%. Will you be that 1%? Will you be part of that 1%? There is, there is hope for 99% of, there is hope for 100% of people to get rich. However, that I don't think will work because there needs to be some kind of hierarchy. Will, but will we be the next 1% that levels the playing field that helps a lot of these poor countries that I spoke about why Africa and nations like that are moving forward with their moving forward and, and, and kicking these other uh, countries that uh, control them out. Right, so moving on. Finan fostering financial inclusion. Um, and this brings me on to Africa perfectly. 
um, fostering financial inclusion through Africa, uh, um, and payments in the Middle East and Africa actually. Um, so we're going to go for a little bit of this, and this was uh, published on the 31st of August, 1 o'clock. And they have speakers that have talked about what they're going to, um, uh, well, hopefully do. today and I hope you don't get discouraged but anyway I'm gonna play of research at on fifth I'm joined by my colleague Edward Malling who's a research analyst and we're going to be talking about central bank reserve management more specifically focusing on sub-saharan Africa and some of the key trends in in reserves there this follows on from our recent global public investor 2023 report which delves into the key trends investment intentions and operations of reserve managers based on our global survey of 75 central banks with international assets of close to 5 trillion US dollars. The reason we're choosing Africa to delve deeper into is because it has particularly... 5 trillion. Did you hear that? 5 trillion. ...unique and interesting trends which are different from some of the other regions. Generally speaking, the reserves are, have come under pressure and there's some interesting insights into the assets which reserve managers have indicated they are demanding and we're going to delve into some of the currency intentions there as well amid some of these recent claims over de-dollarization so i think just taking a step back ed what are you seeing as some of the main trends we've seen from reserves in sub-saharan africa well thank you nickel it will come as not a surprise to most people that central bank reserve managers suffered uh, were, were forced to weather quite difficult conditions last year. And this was reflected across all regions in terms of their total international reserve levels. They fell across the board between March 2022 and 2023 by roughly 3%, which marked quite recovery on to decline of around 10% uh, up until October from the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine war. And these, the effects of that conflict and their impacts on markets were felt most acutely in Africa, who across the whole year, total reserves declined by almost 5%, which was the highest level of any region. And these effects were particularly acute in commodity importers, such as the likes of Egypt and Ghana, who were at various times throughout the year required to look to the International Monetary Fund for assistance. So external positions across the continent and particularly in these countries declined and this was reflected within our survey findings uh, from respect unfortunately what happens and I, I had to interject here when it comes to africa and the imf they are enslaved the imf is not an organization that does not have its own agenda when it comes to dealing with Africa and lending them money. It's the same with any other entity that lends or gives money to these supposed poorer nations. These supposed, na these supposed poor nations have the assets that we need. And it's unfortunate that the majority of people in the Western world have lived off the riches of these countries and who have enslaved, if you will, not by our own hand, I would admit, but by governments. These countries are now, if you will, freeing themselves. They are not going to be cajoled or pushed around anymore into doing the will of others that do not benefit them unfortunately 
we live in a world that's extremely selfish and there's a lot of people that don't consider others before themselves we have moved into a world that those that think that they have the most control the, mo the many and there are only a few of them and we're seeing the cracks in this happening now the cracks in the system the cracks that are going to shape the world and unfortunately there will be some that miss out on this great exchange of wealth they call it the great transfer of wealth in history and it is mm -hmm. there have been people that have made millions before in this mm -hmm. great, great greatest transfer of wealth but there are those that will make millions more and some in a legitimate system that works for all so the 99 percent now needs to wake up i cannot wake up that i cannot do it on my own i'm trying this is why I do these videos. Yes, they can be abstract. Um, I do have a problem with being dyslexic at a point, so sometimes I will not uh, um, read certain texts or go through it, and other times it will be just, oh, absolutely fl fl fluent. And I don't get why that happens, but it happens, okay? And I guess it's a glitch in my matrix or <laughs> my system. But what I'm trying to say is people need to wake up wake up to the major change that is happening okay uh, let's get back on with this active we look specifically at sub-saharan africa in the GCAR report and across 34 of the countries included in this region the reserves declined in 28 of those many of these countries already found themselves in a precarious position given and I have to interject again, these countries are mostly Francophone um, countries that, or Franco-freak, if you will, um, freak. Um, but they're Francophone. They they rely on um, the 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 franc, uh, but they have their own uh, currency. But it's a much more devalued currency um, for those particular nations. That's how they control their minerals and their um, assets and make it cheaper for us to buy but unfortunately this is going to have an impact on us and it's already had an impact if you look at uh, uh, our energy bills etc etc they are a much more higher as opposed to what they would have been had there not been this exposure and this um, decoupling happening um, and it, we are on the cusp of a major change and unfortunately we don't all have to suffer the lingering effects of the coronavirus pandemic reserves to gdp ratios in the region have slipped below 10 percent and for some perspective these levels are still above 20 percent in asia pacific 30 percent in the middle east many of these countries obviously performing relatively well to other regions given their increase in oil prices throughout the year and this level of 10 percent is also below the levels of reserve adequacy that we see in latin america for example where they sit around 15 percent so whilst not the most accurate or causal debt ratio to specifically look at it provides an indication as to the level of reserves adequacy in the region and most telling was are finding that 29% of respondents to our survey from sub-Saharan Africa self-assess that their international reserves are less than adequate, whereas the same number for the remainder of the sample was only 5%. So right. That's quite striking. Then. So it's, it's quite, uh, I guess, summing up that from what you're saying is that it's sub-Saharan African reserve managers took quite a hit in the last year or so, that in 28 of the 34 countries in sub-Saharan Africa had seen their reserves decline and 29% of those who responded to our survey from the region said their re reserves are inadequate, which is far more than, than others, which is perhaps linked to their frail positions coming into the crisis. Here's the thing. Uh, 
They're talking about the crisis, coming into the crisis. The crisis has acerbated the fact that they say that the, the reserves have declined. The reason why the, the, the reserves have declined is because of high interest rates and inflation. Inflation is a tax. Inflation is theft. Uh, the Russia-Ukraine crisis and the surge in commodity prices which hit some of the importers. I wonder then how does that play into what some of the survey respondents told us are some of their main economic concerns right now, given that a lot of them came into this year with invulnerable positions? Oh, well, fears of stagflation um, come across quite strongly in our survey findings. The impacts of tightening monetary, monetary conditions around the world, and in particular the rate hikes from the Federal Reserve have prompted reserve managers everywhere to reassess their investment strategies, particularly over the short to midterm. And the concerns of a global economic slowdown and the prospects of a global recession are most apparent to sub-Saharan African reserve managers. The fears of global economic slowdown in the next 12 to 24 months in particular were twice the entire average in sub-Saharan Africa at more than one third, 36%. And as you alluded to, this presumably relates to the fact that a lot of these countries already find themselves in a vulnerable position and the prospect of further rate hikes overseas only increases the risks of further capital outflows, compounding the effects of this already quite precarious position they find themselves in. Right. <sighs> This is all because we have created high inflation in, and also let's go back a little bit more to where um, Russia, if you will, the Baltic Sea. It's an active investigation. Berlin warns not to jump to hasty conclusions. We'll go over the facts and possible motives to once and for all uh, say who once and for all severed Europe's uh, dependency on the Kremlin for its energy. Was it a false flag operation by... Whether false flag or not, right, it happened. Okay? Whether this was to um, extract wealth from us in Europe or not, it has happened. Now, we have to deal with this. We have to understand that we are in a position of the massive wealth transfer in history. You, me, others, can be in that position to extract as much wealth as we possibly can from the new system that is emerging. We've had Web 1 which was, which was web, web, web one, web two, and now, now we've got web three. is not financial advice but what I will say you need to do your own research we are we are in a financial change there's no doubt went from web one and what is web one basically the first version of web one uh, or web consisted of a few people creating 
web pages and content on web pages for a large group of readers, allowing them to access facts, information, and content from the sources. That's web one, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna go to too, into too much detail about that, but you guys can do your own research into all of this. They, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm not gonna leave all the links because I don't think that's necessary. What I think is necessary just to, 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 to kind of explain for those who don't know or, or, or for those who are still seeking to um, understand this this business and or understand the changes understand that we will never go back to what was that's not happening we have now web two if web two um if, if web one uh was made for small group of people generating content for larger audience then web two is for many people uh, creating more content for a growing, growing audience where web, web one was focused on reading web two focus and on per, per, participating and contribution right so now let's go on to what web three is because i can't be dealing with that because we we are all in web web two right now okay come on let's wake up to the actual fact we are in web two Right, but the, 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 there is going to be a flip of the switch when it comes to Web3. But I think there has been a flip of the switch because, listen, uh, um, we are, I, I, I'm collecting um, digital assets and I am sure some of you listening into this uh, will, will be doing or watching this will be doing uh, the same. Where I'm trying to get to with this particular um, video is utility yeah where that is more paramount than anything else going into 2024 and 2025 mm. perspectively sorry about that mm. thing uh, i also get a lot of messages and people sending me their their links which i i can't I, like i do my scam videos here and I, I i do make it quite clear that's not that's not something i'm into uh, um, you know, uh, 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 I really want people to to see and to understand that we are, have transitioned into Web three. Yeah, this is where I'm going with this video today, and and hopefully you will see and grasp it and not turn off from it. Whether you, you know what I mean, but I hope that you bear with it. It's a long one. It is a long one. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's long. Okay, um, so what is Web3? Um, and finally, we come to the latest version, uh, the, way, the latest web iteration. When trying to figure out the definitive Web3 meaning, we need to look at into, into the future. Although there, is, there are elements of Web3 currently available, it still has a way to go before it reaches full realization. And that is a fact. There are no quick fixes to this the system right now. Okay. Um, uh, the system has been um, developed, but when I say no quick fixes, I'm saying about the distraction that people are in right now. There's an imbalance. Everybody is is like freaking out whether it's going to work or it's not. Uh, will it be gold? Will it be silver? Will it be the dollar or not? And I think that's a lot to do with what's going on in the media. I think people are not thinking about what has happened in the past the changes that we've had to go through the world has gone through many 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 changes some of you may have been alive for it some of you wouldn't have been alive for it some of you also need to look at history and wake up because a lot of people are walking around or walking around with their masks on and their if you will blinkers on they're not seeing what's happening. This has happened many, many, many times before. And every time 
those who are in the know become the one percent so think about that okay think about it Two is the persistence of web, and web three is um, no social. Uh, sorry, perceptive of social web, and the web three point oh is the re text right execute execute web. Sorry, I butchered that a little bit. But hey, let's do it. <laughs> let, let, let's carry on. This uh, web interaction that and utilization stage moves users away from centralized platforms like facebook google or or twitter and you i have to mention x x wants to become a payment a payments network and you can go and look this up you can go and do your own research into this seriously like web uh, like wechat um but um less centralized as a web wechat uh, and, and i hope x doesn't mark the spot in terms of a controlled system and I put that out there because I think people need to think of that does X mark the spot think about that anyway let's move on um, Twitter towards decentralized uh, nearly an anonymous platforms of worldwide web inventor Tim Lee literally called web 3 the seismic web and envisioned or visionized an intelligent autonomous and web inter internet that uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to act as a global brain and process content conceptu conceptually conceptually and contextually sorry but you know i did say i have a little bit of dyslexia going on so please excuse, but I, you know what, when it when when it doesn't have its barrier, it, it really works. Um, but you know what, sometimes there is glitches, and we all have those. We all have our moments in this world. This is an idealized version. Didn't um, quite pan out due to technology, technological, technological, in a, uh, limitations like how expressive and complicated it is to convert human language into something rapidly rapidly or readily sorry understood by computers this is amazing okay are humans going to fit into this and we already have heard from certain agendas that certain three letter words beginning with W and, and may have a, a, an H in, in, and a zero somewhere or, or a O or somewhere involved there is an agenda there whether you believe that is or not you have to consider that but I don't expect that they that will actually happen because there has to be pushback because that there, there you know light in this world always um shines through there's there it will be dark there will be dark periods and this is one of them this is a dark period for many many and history has shown um, people go through dark periods but we are gonna go through a period of light, a period of where people experience light and an abundance abundance for 
I believe, a thousand years or so. Whether that happens in my lifetime or not, I do not know. I cannot predict the future. But what I can say is, moving into the future, it is digital payments. It is, it, that is the narrative. That is where we are. Digital payments, world changed in 2019. payments sit at the heart of international trade and economic activity. However, for too long, cross-border payments have faced four key challenges. High cost, low speed, limited access, and insufficient transparency. Faster, cheaper, more transparent, and inclusive cross-border payments would bring widespread benefits to supporting economic growth, international trade, development, and financial inclusion. Given the cross-border nature of these markets, coordinated international action is central to addressing these issues. And, of course, the involvement of the private sector is vital. In February, the G20, the group of the world's largest economies, called for action to enhance cross-border payments. We have now delivered a roadmap to the G20 designed to make a real difference in addressing the challenges for existing cross-border payments. The roadmap provides a high-level plan which sets ambitious but achievable goals. You're going to hear a lot of these... This roadmap like... brings together a coalition of international and national actors to deliver on five focus areas. First, a commitment to a joint public and private sector vision of the improvements in cross-border payments we want to achieve. Second, steps to coordinate reg I am talking about the, the younger population here. But also, I would also say the older generation, those that um, embrace technologies, those that are uh, of the age from... I would say, you know, they say the young, younger generation up to the age of 30, uh, they are embracing, but a lot of them, unfortunately, are not embracing. You're seeing more countries like in Africa that are um, embracing these new technologies and they are understanding the global shift that is taking place. And for them, it's much more of a blank canvas. So think about that. When, when it comes to them being um, um, uh, Africa's and the, Asia, the Asiatic um, nations and even including, uh, um, not being funny, some parts of Europe. And I won't mention the name, but BRICS um, stands out here that are, are, are moving forward with, uh, I believe, 47% of the world um, population that means an awful lot in terms of buying power. Think about that. And also think about why um, there has been rumour, I'm not saying this is likely to happen, but they want to reduce population by to 500 million. How on earth will that ever work? How? How? You may have your, your um, robots or your AI technologies, etc., etc., doing stuff, but reducing the population to that mean, means that they're saying they have to start all over again. But by doing that, what they're meaning is they will eradicate, get rid of certain people. If you look at what's happened with the thing that's happening in Europe at the moment. Think back to 1939, 1945. 
What was that about? I leave that in your mind to think about. But I'm still good. This is, I, I said this was going to be long. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my days. I am having to to do this because I feel inspired to want to do this and go back in the journey and go back and go into the future, if you will. Go back and forth, go back and forth into, and we're going into the future. And this is where I'm coming to. So let's play this video, carry on with this video actually. This roadmap brings together a coalition of international and national actors to deliver on five focus areas. First, a commitment to a joint public and private sector vision of the improvements in cross-border payments we want to achieve. Second, steps to coordinate regulatory. Third, changes to existing payment infrastructures so it can support the changes in cross-border payments we need. Fourth, better data quality and market practices to enable reliable straight-through processing of cross-border payments. And fifth, exploratory work to examine the role that new technologies and payment infrastructures might bring uh, in delivering these improvements. The roadmap we publish today sets out in detail the steps required by a wide range of stakeholders to make cross-border payments faster, cheaper, more transparent and more reliable. More details are available on the FSP website. <laughs> you clearly was reading from a script, okay. And one of the other things I would hope um, people who are waking up to what's happening is that um, certain language, certain words, certain terminologies are used throughout these three letter organizations okay wake up to those things do your own research uh, i please beg you to do that because it's beneficial because you're not going to be led down some trap you're not going to be led down some scam you're not going to be let down something that does not actually comply with global regulations going forward and this is why i'm trying to get through it to to the masses or to the people that are listening to this right now i don't have many subscribers and i don't expect that i will because i come a bit of a quirky one in this space however what i'm trying to say to you is this there is scams out there there are so many of them it's unbelievable and they come in many different guises they come in many different forms they choose different names diff different terminologies and they have nothing 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 absolutely nothing to do with what's going forward in the financial future there will continue to be scams in this banking world and this internet world whether you like it or not the thing is whether you can wake up and spot them and whether you can avoid them this is why I'm trying to lead people into the avoidance of those particular things that are happening. This is a long journey in terms of maybe a couple of years, you know, more before we have um, a final conclusion as to what's happening because we still need stable coin, coin regulations and that is happening in the US um, at the moment. They're, they're drawing up the stable coin regulation, uh, regulations and I expect that's going to be pegged to the dollar but I hope and I would love I would pray actually I would pray that it's not going to be a centralised entity that is going to enslave the masses I, I hope that the US constitution and the many people that are out there within the US see this as something that is vital to um, carrying on with the US in its current, not current form because at the moment there is no democracy over there. It's controlled and it's um, very much going to fail in, if it doesn't um, wake up to what's happening to 
um, well, what they've done to the populace, what, you know, the poverty that's in that country is amazing. Not in a literal sense of being amazing, but it's amazing in terms of a country that purports itself to be one that has always looked after the looked after its the poor and, uh, and 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 been the masters of the world, but then it's it has the most poor, if you will, enslaved people, and they are all works of life. Uh, and it's not just the US. Operational resilience challenges, challenge challenges. Sorry, um, you have um, this. This is something that is is happening. What's ahead for uh, twenty twenty three cross border payments? And this is where XDC comes into play. I've already played. Uh, uh, there's a video if you look through it where XDC is um, been given the go ahead for cross border cross-border payment, um, um, payments and digital document signage. Um, you know, uh, um, it's hard to see so many people out there still not watching and seeing what's happening. Still not waking up to where this world is going to you know central bank digital currencies yes many people may fear it but there are um more than over 114 countries representing over 90 95 percent of the global gdp um and uh are exploring the opportunities of that um, central bank digital currency cbt's digital uh, representative money issued by central banks might bring a and they say might Bring to a few countries, a few. Not the many. It ain't bringing nothing to the many. It is not to a few. Come on, that's still control. To my view, that's why I think about it. We need a decentralized um, platform or currency that allowed people to trade freely amongst themselves. Not being funny. If people want to go and do drugs and kill themselves, that's up to them. They know the risks. That should not be something that is controlled by anybody, right? I am not saying that everybody should go out there and do that stuff. What I'm saying is, if people want to go and do it, they do it. That's not going to change. People will find ways not being funny right now there's magic mushroom season so it's naturally available anyway hello through this year, two year investigation into digital euro. While a decision ex expected later this year is in, is the UK, a, a bank of, no, sorry, a bank of England consulted consultation on the possible introduction of digital pound is open until June 27, uh, June 7, 2023. That's already passed, okay? But we already know 
that the XDC is one of the the tokens that they're using within um, the system. Okay, um, sorry I butchered that a little bit, but you know what? As I said, glitches. Okay, it happens. Okay. Eh? Right, and deal with that, you know. And if you don't want to listen to it, I don't care. I really don't. <laughs> because I am just being me. And I, I am, what I am trying to do is wake up all. Not just some. But I hope Africa is... But Africa is the, is, is the, 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 the blank canvas for all of this. But Africa needs not to be controlled anymore. Not digitally enslaved this time round this is what I fear but it's not a fear because it's not going to happen it's not going to happen Africa is already free in my view and this is the last the last um, stronghold that allows the world to be free to digitally and economically be free from slavery whether it be in in the digital world or not because commodities will have to be exchanged for exchanged for something there has to be something of value or there's nothing of value you can't keep stealing because at the end of the day this is the situation this is the way the world is at the moment it's already stolen enough from others and enslaved others mm. and taken away from others and and we need to that needs to change it has to change you know that's the way it has to be This brings me on to the trade facilitation innovation days in 2023. 19th to the 20th um, of September. Um, I'm not affiliated with any of this, okay? <laughs> Actually, I am not sure if that's a copyright. Um, piece of material so I am going to have to let this play without the volume uh, sorry about that I hope that's not a strike but we'll find out uh, right so trade tech um, it's gonna uh, I'm gonna let it play and you guys can watch it um, what they're saying um, with text um, trade fi finance see, see, seizing the future Harnessing the power of technologies, um, seem streamlining trade, reinvesting um, supply chains, exploring how technology can reinforce uh, uh, re reinforce res res resilience and and drive greater um, efficiencies. Um, advancing e-commerce technology has made it possible now. It's now it's time to improve it. Um, risk management, em, embracing adaptability, adaptability. Uh, sorry, I can't say it. Um, and climate smart uh, trade uh, facilitation. Um, sorry, I butchered that a little bit. But you know what? It's what it is today. I told you it was going to be long, and I'm like trying to go through this and do my best. But it's what it is. Uh, given information spoken about this 
uh, um, solution when it comes to XRP. XRP didn't just go through a lawsuit, lawsuit for any reason. It happened for a reason to give it clarity in this market. Hence, it's not deemed as a security. So what's going to happen now is that it will uh, advance in terms of its use case. However, what, what the other pe thing people don't realise is that there is still a pending lawsuit on, in terms of, uh, or, 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 or those in the XRP army realise that, those who are invested in this particular token know that, that um, there is still the impending um, initial sales, the IPO, the initial, or the ICO, sorry, initial coin offering um, sales to whether it be exchanges or ind individuals that are in question. But the same can be said for Ethereum. Um, and Ethereum at the moment has an awful lot of high gas fees and still high gas fees. Anything that's based on the Ethereum network has high gas fees. One has to question whether that Ethereum uh, still needs, um, well, it does, it still needs updates because like, it's still a little bit terms of in terms of uh, cost high high unless you you use sorry unless you use um, certain chains you can get lower fees but an, an awful lot of people don't understand that or know that and there's still there is a question of how it was sold in its initial offering at the time that it was it, that ethereum was offered Anyway, guys, this has been one of the longest videos for me that I've ever, ever done. I hope you guys appreciate it. Yes, I had to pause a few bits and I struggled with a little bit of it. But you know what? I'm glad I've done this today. I'm glad I put myself through this because, like, Far too many people are being ripped off and far too many people, whether you be black, white in, or indifferent, are doing it to each other and are hoping, and they're creating these websites and they're hoping that you as an individual will suffer that faith. They're hoping that you'll be gullible enough to fall into that trap. You know, it, it's disgusting. Wake up. These things do not pay you out. If you try and withdraw, they will come up with all the different excuses for you to pay certain fees. And when you pay the fee, you don't get that money. This is why I, I, I really stress about the scams and how they actually operate. now waking up to the fact that they don't have to use the system that has been put in place on them to extort them when we wake up to that fact when 99 percent of the world wake up to that fact a lot of them and unfortunately like every change that happens in history there'll only be one percent that make it through question 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 
Are you part of that 1%? Or will you be part of the 99? Sheep that are left to follow a system that will continue, that will continue to keep you in the dark as opposed to bringing you into the light. That said, nothing is impossible today. Nothing. Even the 99% can still get up there. They are waking up. As a result, we are seeing the, the massive protests. We're seeing um, a lot of change happening, starting with trade finance. And this is where I will start this video because um, start the the where I'm going with this with with what I'm trying to say. There are there's so many um, things to talk about.